Hey everyone, so just for fun I thought I would give my two cents on the topic of artificial out of bounds. And by this I mean not areas that are out of bounds because they're hazardous or they're natural out of bounds, but the ones with the tournament director or, or course designer has created an artificial out of bounds with an attempt to either enhance the hole or make it more challenging or more interesting. Um, I'm doing this video now because the USDGC is coming up next week and from my memory the USDGC was the first event to really introduce a lot of the artificial out of bounds. I don't know if it was Harold Duvall or Jonathan Poole or whoever, but um, I just was picking on the uh, Island Greens with the Forest Reed tee last time. So I didn't want to give anybody the impression I was picking on uh, the USDGC or the guys down there because my opinion, it's not the most popular one, but I love the artificial out of bounds. 95% of the times I, I've, I've seen it used, I think it's improved the whole. I think it's made the whole more interesting. In a lot of cases, a whole or an entire course could be incredibly boring if not for the artificial out of bounds. I think Winthrop University is a great example. That was a good course without all the out of bounds. I thought it became a great course with the, the out of bounds. Now, it can be done incorrectly. Uh, we talked about it last week. I mean, it, it doesn't mean it's automatically good using out of bounds, but overall, I like it. The way I like to think of it is, Tournament directors, if they had the money, or should say course designers, would build bunkers, or they would build artificial lakes. They could build these things, but we don't have the budget for disc golf, so the artificial out of balance gives the course designer a chance to create the hole that they envision um, artificially, but that doesn't bother me. So I I'm a big fan. Not the most popular opinion, but uh, I like those holes. So that's all. That's my two cents.